Cortez, they're, they're, they're the guys going to be a part of it. Smoke had the one single, almost took Cliff Lee's head off last night. So we got Friday for with Felix. You had Saturday with Cliff Lee today with a rubber match between the Mariners and the Rangers. You got a couple of righties on the mound. Let's take a look at our starters today, Mr. Kruger. It's Tommy Hunter, 12 and 3, Doug Fister at 5 and 12. But just like it was, we talked about it for Felix on Friday. Time for Fister to get, get his first win against the Rangers. Yeah, and you know, he really earned it uh, on the 2nd of May when he shut him out over innings, only three hits. I uh, did get hit around the next time, but uh, you know, those first 10 starts for Doug Fister were unbelievable. And uh, you know, it's been a lot of up and down since then. A lot of good stretches and a few poor stretches. The big key for him today, being able to throw that change up and throw it a lot. This Ranger team geared for the fastball. He's going to have to pitch way in for strikes and then use that change up. If he does so, he's going to have a lot of success against that fastball munching Ranger club. Now Hunter on the other side, a very good record at 12 and 3, but what kind of pitcher is he? Well, he's more of a finesse guy. He's not going to overwhelm you. Fastball, a little touch, 90 miles an hour. He'll cut the ball in, away from the righty, in on the lefty. A very good curveball, good control. This guy was brilliant early. 8 0 out of the shoot. He's now 12 and 3, the best winning percentage in the league. But again, a guy that's not going to overwhelm me. Those left hand hitters, Brad, they're going to have a chance today. Five of them in the lineup. Hunter, very good numbers here at Safe Goal Field. Again, Fister going for win number one against the Rangers. Mariners going for a series win against the Rangers. We're back with more highlights on Mariners Live on FSN. capital of the Northwest. The Tracer system uses three cameras to track every pitch. Graphical enhancements have been added to the EQC Tracer this season to give you more information and insight into the game.
And Kuyas is open behind the plate on that strike from Brian Angler. It is the final Sunday in summer, and it has come up a beauty here in Seattle. After some morning rain, the roof has been peeled away, and this will be the rubber game of the three-game series between the Mariners and the Texas Rangers. And we do wish you a very happy Sunday, everybody. Dave B. House along with Mike Flowers, and welcome to Safe Cold Field one more time. The Texas Rangers have been mighty tough on the Mariners, and Mariners trying to get it turned around here. This is the final time these two ball clubs when we hear they've got three more games to take care of down in Texas before it's all over and the Rangers magic number is six they can smell it they, they really can and they're, they're playing good baseball they're hoping to get Hamilton healthy and back in their lineup before the postseason gets here but we saw Cliff Lee he looks like he's raring to go after dealing with a back issue let's have a look at the Texas Rangers lineup for this afternoon Sport manager Ron Washington leading things off it'll be Elvis Andrews and it's young Murphy Guerrero the DH hits fourth Cruz has had a nice series. He hits fifth, and it's Kinsler, Moreland, Trainer, and Borbone, the center fielder, will hit ninth. 
Take a look at the numbers for Doug Fister. ERA to 395, 152 innings pitch for so far for Doug. That's a high number for him. 87 strikeouts, opponent to average 268. Take a look at the defense behind him. Langerhans getting the start out in left field. Saunders moves over to center. Good ears will be the DH. Each row and right. Lopez, Wilson, Biggins, and Justin Smoke at first. Guillermo Quiros getting the start behind the plate tonight. And there he is, Gall, tall 6'8", to right-hander Doug Fister, facing the Rangers for the third time this year. As Elvis Andres in a little bit of a slump over his last 10, steps in, and we are underway. Yeah. On the count on Andres, the uh, Texas Rangers on their final road trip of the year. From here, they head down to Anaheim for three, and then Oakland for four. And then they're road trips are over for the year. Road's not been real good for them, however. 35 and 38. Three games under 500 on the road this year. 66 degrees. At game time, the wind out of the northeast at a couple of miles an hour. It's turned out to be a beautiful day. That's too far inside. The man calling balls and strikes is Ed Hickox this afternoon. Chopper by the bound, charged by Wilson, and his throw at first is played by Joyce as he gets in. And a good sign for Doug Fister. Want the guys to beat the ball in the ground. That's what Andrus does, but with his speed, Josh having to hustle in. Gets rid of it quickly. Nice play for Josh Wilson to start the game. And Michael Young will be the hitter now, the third baseman. Everybody with Texas in town talking about, you know, how far can this club really go? And I, I don't have any idea, but I know they've got to get Josh Hamilton healthy to, I think, really have much of a chance. Uh, the delivery's inside, two and one to count. But with a guy like Cliff Lee as your anchor, and with the playoff experience that he has had last year, going 4 0 in postseason play. I don't think he's got some shot at it, at least. As that ball is handled nicely by Josh, and he has both assists here, two away. I would agree with you. I, I think Hamilton is a big key for them, but Cliff being healthy, which he looks like his last couple outings, including the one that he had in last night's game, he looks like he's back to his normal self, which is tough. And you go into the postseason, you have to have that number one guy, and they have it. I know Angie was just talking about Sabathia winning his 20th, and he certainly is a big game pitcher also. David Murphy is the hitter, and he pops it up and out of play. Into the lower deck. The battle for the Cy Young Award will be rejoined again by Felix Hernandez on Thursday in Toronto as he will face the Blue Jays. And yes, I know that... Uh, Mr. Sabathia won his 20th yesterday. In the delivery outside, one ball and one strike. Hope you had a chance to read Larry Stone's article today in the Times about the Cy Young balloting. That's back up the middle for a base hit. So Murphy, the base hit. With two away, and here comes Vladimir Guerrero. Did the article come out favorable towards yeah, very much, Very much so. Uh, I think the pressure continues to be on. I don't think he has a chance to stub his toe at all in his final two or three starts. Right. Whatever. We know it's going to be two, but it's not sure if it's going to be three. Right. I would agree with that. I don't think he can. As Guerrero puts this ball over toward the Texas dugout. Oh, and won the count. Yeah. 
and that's out of play. Two strikes. Ground ball slowly hit to second. And bobbling the ball this time as Josh can't do it. Had a chance to get all three assists. That'll be an error. Ball is not hit hard. Fister's able to jam. Guerrero goes back up the middle. Looks like Josh has it in pretty good shape. Just can't get the handle on it. Drops it after he fields it. He had time out right on the heel of his glove. That's why he wasn't able to get his right hand on it cleanly. And here comes powerful Nelson Cruz. William Felix is no hit dead the other night with a, a ball over the center field fence. year for the Mariners and it'll be spent in an airplane taking a five-hour flight over to Toronto Ooh. and a fastball up and in two and two you almost want to say and I've always said up to Toronto but if you look at the map it's down to Toronto we are north of Toronto strange isn't it <laughs> Two and two. Yeah. And a fly ball off the end of the bat. Each row will come in and have the play. So here in the first to hit an error, but two left out there. We are underway. The Mariners are coming up against Tommy Hunt. Seven hits away from 200, and it's big. It's good here. It's the DH today. He hits third. Lopez smoked. Langerhans getting a start in left field. Hit six. Wilson Saunders and Kiero gets his first start of the year behind the plate and hitting ninth. Take a look at the numbers for Hunter. He's had a nice year. 12 and three with a 3.97 ERA. 111 innings pitched for him. And the defense behind him: Murphy, Barbone, and Cruz in the outfield. Across the infield is Young, Andrews, Kinsler, Mitch Moreland will get the start at first base. And Matt Trainer will do the catching. 
Tommy Hunter was uh, hurt at the beginning of the year, had some hip problems, but baby, when he got started, he got started. He went 8-0 and out of the chute for the Texas Rangers, and he hasn't stopped. He's 12-3 and as each row takes away ball one, one ball, and no strikes to count. See by the numbers that were just on the screen. He's pitched well against the Mariners this year. ERA of a 146. Big thighs as each row's hit total out there 193. A couple of infield hits yesterday. The ball and two strikes. Well, you look at Hunter, he's a big man. You'd expect him to throw hard. He really doesn't. He'll be 88 to 90 miles an hour. Change speeds. Good movement on his fastball. Curveball, baby. It's a very foul. Tries to keep the ball down. Throws a lot of strikes. He will try to expand the strikes. He'll get guys to swing the pitches off the plate. Two strikes now. Turned out to be a rather lovely Sunday afternoon. Mike to third. He's got it. So with one down, Sean Figgins will be the hitter. Did you hear about Tyler Colvin today? I did not. The Cub outfielder was. Uh, playing in Florida, and he was a base runner, and he was scoring from third when the hitter shattered his bat, and the bat stuck in his shoulder coming in to score. He was taken to the hospital. Apparently, one of those maple bats. Although I'm not sure about that, so I won't state that it was a maple bat. But he's in, I guess, pretty good condition. But. The ball impaled him just below the collarbone in the left chest. The bat did. The bat did. Yeah. That's scary. We, we, we talk about it all the time. Biggest reason why is because of the maple bats. And we see them splinter off and get sharp edges to them. I've always been concerned about it happening to a pitcher because they're so close. But to see that happen to a base runner, that is scary. Hopefully he'll be okay. He's in a stable condition at Miami's Jackson Memorial Hospital. And they're going tests for a wound of undetermined depth right now. More will be coming out about this, I'm sure. As that fastball straightens him up high and inside. One ball and two strikes to count. They say there was minimal external bleeding. There wasn't no other no whether Colvin would remain in the hospital. Or go back with the club tonight when they go to Chicago. And a high pop up. Shallow. Might be trouble. No, nope, on the run. Or Bone gets there in plenty of time. Do you know, did that happen in last night's game or today's game? Uh, today's game. Today's game. Left side of his chest suffered when he was struck by the splintered head of the bat while running the bases. He was running from third base when Wellington Castillo's bat broke on a double to left field. Struck about 35 feet down the line. The bat head falling away as he grabbed the area where he was hit while continuing to the plate. Man, that's pretty gruesome, isn't it? Yes, it is. Franklin Gutierrez takes a strike. Goody getting the day off in the outfield. He's a designated hitter today. I think the last one that I saw was actually Paul Abbott, where he was hit with a broken bat. Pitching for the Mariners. I can't remember what year it was. It was a while ago, no. Ended up having, I think, to get some stitches from it, but it didn't impale him. The bat, the barrel just hit him. 
Well, Steve Yeager, when he caught with the Dodgers, was on deck and got hit and tailed. Oh, and really? Extra. Yeah. That's the reason they... I guess he was catching. He wasn't on deck. He was catching. Catching. Yeah. That's why they started with that guard that hangs yeah. down from the mass. You don't see as many of them anymore, but for a while, most catchers wore those. Wish the eggs caught here for a while. And a swing and a miss. So the first inning, three up and three down. The story for the end is we go to the second. All right, Angie, as Ian Kinsler steps in to lead it off here in the second inning for the Rangers. Kinsler looks at a nice pitch for a strike, and Mitch Moreland, the first baseman, and then Matt Trainer, the catcher. There's a broken bat right there. Have to hurry his throw? He does. It's a one down. Has some ice cream out there. Good day for that. Jackie Robinson fans. <laughs> Here's Mitch Moreland. Said today was the last day of summer. The uh, last Sunday of summer, last not the last Sunday. day. Last Sunday of summer. Twenty first will be the last. Uh, Day of summer. Strike on the inside corner. One one to count. The great master painter beginning to do his thing, though, as you look around yeah. the area. And he's turning very beautiful in a hurry. Well, on the inside corner. New England is usually a couple of weeks ahead of us here in the Northwest as far as autumnal changes are concerned. Maine, Vermont, and up in that area. So that's got to be really pretty now. One and two. Always wanted to go up there during the autumn. Look at the covered bridges and the farms. And beautiful area. Why don't you do it? Maple syrup. <laughs> you know why? Why? I've flown enough this year. <laughs> Every year about this time, I've flown enough, if you know what I mean. I know exactly what you mean, and <laughs> I would agree with you. Two and two. And down goes Mitch Moreland. Well, Doug looks like he's on his game. 
Nice pitch down and into Moreland swings over the top of it. We've seen a good curveball from him so far. This is Matt Trainer, the young catcher. Better look out. As far as the wild card is concerned, the Giants and Colorado are right on their heels. And Colorado's right on the heels of San Diego and San Francisco, only a game back. They've been unbelievable. Down on strikes goes Matt Trainer. And here in the second, nice one, two, three inning for Doug Fister. No score going to the bottom of the second. Majestic Thermabase Triple Peak Premier Jacket. This jacket is the authentic jacket that will be worn by the players next year. It's available now in men's and women's sizes at all five Mariners team store locations. Bell Square, downtown Seattle, at 4th and Stewart, South Center Mall, Alderwood Mall, and of course right here at Safeco Field. As Jose Lopez takes ball one, one ball and no strikes. on the ball out there by Borbon as he took off at the crack of the bat to pull it down one away. After the season is over, it's been a long season. We all know for all of us. When do you start getting the baseball at you? Get? After Christmas? Yes. I would say once you get through yeah, through the new year and, and you know you kinda of get through all the holidays and all that, that's I think you start thinking about it then. How about you? Yeah. Me too. Me I mean, too. Once, you, once you get through the new year, I mean, you're almost a, you're a month away from spring training at yeah, that point. Yeah, exactly. Strike over the outside corner. I, you hate to see the the World Series end because then that is the end of baseball. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then that's also the fun time of the year when everybody scrambles to try to 
improve themselves. Oh, yeah. Winter meetings, trades. I don't know if it's, if it's just me now, but it seems like a lot of that stuff happens so late now, too. And that's a, an easy fly ball again for Borbone. Ryan Langerhands will be the hitter. Always fun to look at the free agent class after uh, the World Series is over and see who's available. As we mentioned last night, I think probably Cliff Lee will be the number one pitcher. I think so too. When I think Jack Zarensic needs to be congratulated for what he did with Felix Hernandez during the offseason and get him tied up long term. And you know you not to worry about contracts for five years. I would agree with that. And I think a lot of times when you have a young player, which Felix is and will be probably he'll still be a young player at the yeah. end of that contract. Yeah. But he, you know you wonder when somebody signs a deal how they're going to react to it. Well I don't think you could have reacted any better than he has. Yeah he's been great all year long and has handled everything so well in a year that I know has been at times difficult with the job that he has done on the mound so right over the outside corner to line your hands. Base hit in the ball game for the Mariners. The hunter goes away with a fastball and Langerhans hits it right on the button. See Andrews, good looking young shortstop, goes off the end of his glove. That'll be a solid base hit for Langerhans. Probably a good idea with the way Hunter pitches to try to think about up the middle the other way a little bit more. Pitches away a lot. Josh Wilson hits a ball to fairly deep left field, but also very easy for him. Mr. Murphy to get back over there and make the catch. Here in the second, a two out single, but that's it. As we go to the third inning of play, it'll be Borbone, Andrus, and Michael Young. No score.
And welcome back uh, to Safeco Field on this beautiful uh, Sunday afternoon. As uh, over from Yakima. Yeah. Welcome. Eagle Bourbon hits a towering foul down the right field line. We're in 37 mile drive tonight. School tomorrow. <laughs> Pitch. Looks like early on, Doug is throwing a lot more slow curveballs than his changeup. Last curveball, 71 miles an hour. There's a drag bunt. Fister has it. Nice play. So one down. Okay. A trivia question, our AT&T trivia question. Which, or who I should say, did Ted Williams rank as number one on his list of top 20 hitters? Was it the Cobb or DiMaggio or the Bambino or Gary? His personal number one hitter. Hmm. Hall of Famers, all those guys. Played in the same era as... DiMaggio, and that's down low and inside, did not play in the same era as Ty Cobb, but he did with, the, I guess, at the end of Luke Gehrig's career, Gehrig was still playing, and Ted uh, was playing. Here's a ground ball back up the middle, behind the bag at second, great play by Figgins, and he throws him out. Nice range by Sean Figgins. One, four, three. Really nice play by Figgins. Ball hit back up the middle. I don't know if that hit off the foot of Fist or just the mound, but it pops the ball up, which gives Figgins a chance to get to it. Nice accurate throw. I think it's Babe Ruth. Strike on the inside corner. When in doubt, when answering any baseball question, Answer Babe Ruth. <laughs> you know? I just did that. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking ball down low and outside. One ball and one strike to count. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll stick with it then. Yeah. Line drive base hit. So Michael Young goes the other way into right field. And here comes the Man who has the other hit for the Texas Rangers, uh, David Murphy. Outside, my dad used to tell me stories of watching a. Uh, Ruth and, and Cobb he used to go to Detroit up there, play, and how mean Cobb was. So he went over his own mother, you know, to steal a base. But a great hitter. I don't believe that. I don't believe run over his mom. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't like to test him. <laughs> Change for a strike on the outside corner, two and one. Well, didn't they say that he used to sharpen his spikes? Yeah. Line drive, that's a base hit. And headed to third base is Michael Young. He will make it as the throw goes back into second. And Murphy has his second hit in the two outs. The Rangers threaten here in the third. Grab your leader hosen and head on out to the Mariners Oktoberfest. That'll be on Thursday, September the 30th. Your ticket includes a seat in the Oktoberfest section to see the Mariners host the A's, a unique Mariners Stein, and your first beverage at the pregame party in the bullpen market. For tickets and more information, visit Mariners.com slash Oktoberfest. 
Guerrero. Ground ball to third. Lopez has got him. So a couple of hits, but both are left out there on the bases. We go to the bottom half of the third, still. Michael Saunders will lead it off here for the Mariners in the bottom half of the third inning. We have no score. A beautiful uh, Sunday. And Saunders will punch that ball back into the lower deck down the left field line. Time so Michael Young handles that with one down. Guillermo Carroz has played with Toronto and Baltimore, Texas. Had a cup of coffee with the Mariners at last year, a couple years ago. He's played at A and a double A and triple A ball this year at West Tennessee and also with uh, Tacoma. Back in the show and getting a start here. One and oh. Show base hit. Checking our AT&T trivia question. You fans said that 30% well, of you said Joe DiMaggio was Babe's favorite hitter. And uh, Ted Williams' favorite hitter. And Ted Williams said, yes, the Babe was his favorite hitter, Mike. Look at that list. Man alive. Ralph Kiner, number 20. That one surprises me. He's a great power hitter, not necessarily a, a great hitter. A great power hitter with the Pirates. 
One one to count. Some lifts, I mean, you could kind of move it around a little bit, but that's, that's pretty good. Number 13, Chris Speaker, the center fielder with the Boston Red Sox. It always intrigued me because of his nickname. The Gray Eagle. Gray Eagle. Because he could really go get a ball. And he had that silver hair. I'd probably move Mickey Mantle up on that list for me. He was 12th. One and two on each year old. have to be careful of that with each row at the plate unless the ball gets so deep he hits the ball out of the catcher's glove a lot especially when he has two strikes one and two on him Your old fly ball in the deep right center field. That's run down out there. Very nicely by Nelson Cruz. So two down. Speaking of the splendid splitter, he said if I was being paid thirty thousand dollars a year, the very least I could do is hit four hundred. <laughs> if there was ever a man born to be a hitter. It was me. <laughs> We're talking about this morning. A couple of triple crowns for him. Right. You're telling me because I'd forgotten about it. I knew it, but I forgot that one year he won the triple crown and didn't win the MVP because of Joe DiMaggio. He 56 consecutive games, yeah. Here's Figgy. Still think that's a record least likely to be broken? 56 consecutive games? Mm. Least likely? I, I'm going to tell you something. I think the record, at least in that same category, I think. That pitch is hit to right field for the third out. It's Nolan Ryan, 7 no I agree. So Sean Pickens lines out to right. Here in the third, a hit, a man left, and no score after three.
All right, Angie, as we go into the fourth inning of play, Nelson Cruz, the right fielder, will be the first to look at Doug Pfister, who, despite giving up uh, three hits, has had things pretty well under control. Tommy Hunter has given up only two hits. The Mariners have not advanced the runner as far as second base. That pitch is hit to deep center field and a leap out there and a grab out there by Michael Saunders right up against the Mariner logo. That ball was very well read by Saunders. We've seen Michael play center field a couple of times and we know he covers a lot of ground and left, but this is a nice play ball head out to right center field. Goes up high in the air and catches it just before he slams into the fence. You're right, he went right to it. Nice play. Outstanding play. As Ian Kinsler is the hitter now. Want to know? Steve, right? His bat. And it's going to be run down. Nice play by Josh. Doug has broken a number of bats so far. He said Josh gets a good jump on it. Little flare out in the left field. Nice running catch. So a couple of nice running catches now for the Mariners. Helping Doug out. And Mitch Moreland will be the hitter. Should be the third out, I would think. And it will be as coming in is Langer hands to make the catch. So very quick six pitch inning for Doug Fister. We'll go to the bottom half. The fourth still no score. Runs. Doug Fister's throwing a nice ball game. <laughs> dump him. Don't dump him. Yeah, good idea. Franklin Gutierrez. He's the hitter. You gotta figure out how many pounds of rally fries you've given away during the course of the season. 
A lot, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. A lot of potatoes going out there. One and one. The Mariners will be getting some new teammates as uh, the road trip continues, and after Tuesday, finding out what happens in uh, Oklahoma City, where Tacoma will be playing uh, Columbus for the AAA championship. There'll be more call-ups. I'm looking forward to it. I'm not sure how many there will be. Well, less than two weeks to go in the season. I'm not sure how many guys will bring at that point. Then you got the fall league coming up. Might give them a chance to catch a breath a little bit before they send them out to play more baseball. Elvis. Elvis has him. One down here in the port. Jose Lopez, the hitter. Will be a fairly deep fly ball to Barbon in center field. Slow curve ball, 77 miles an hour. Jose thinking he's going to get a first pitch fastball. One of one. Mariners, of course, their struggle with offense continues, having scored only three runs in the first two games of this series. And lucky to be one of one as that two hopper is hit right to third. Invite you to catch all the action of the postseason. It's coming right up. It's on Fox and it's on TBS. The excitement begins October the 6th with the division series on TBS. Justin Smoke, a fly ball to center field in the second. Got him on the foot. That one hurt. I usually have to walk him off. He has that guard on his leg. It looks like he covers part of his foot. You get it out there on your toe. You can see it right towards the end of his foot, but not quite covering up his toe. Hunter's one strike pitch. Yeah. High fly ball hit to fairly deep right center field way back there. And it's going to be one down by Bourbon to retire the side. Three up, three down here in the fourth. We got it going, don't we? No score after four.
he might be. All right, Angie, as uh, we go into the fifth inning of play, no score. Matt Trainer, the uh, catcher, puts the slider away. Ball one, one ball, and no strikes. One, one. Fister. Typical Fister game. He pitches very, very well. Like almost every pitcher goes out there, no support. Is that his pull foul down the left field line? Through the first three innings, majority of their strikeouts or ground ball outs, a good sign for him, but last inning, three fly ball outs and actually pop ups, most of them. The one in center field that Saunders made a nice play on, but the other two were not hit well. Ball up and in. Yankees and Baltimore are in extra innings. Tied 3 3 in Baltimore. As, uh, as Andy just reported, Tampa Bay beaten by the Angels. Deep to center field again, and Saunders a good jump. It's like he's got those natural center field instincts out there. He's a good athlete. He's, we we talk about it. He's a good athlete, but he does the same thing in left field. He gets a good jump on a lot of those line drives or shallow balls to left. He gets to most of them, and it's not just because he runs well, which he does. He gets a good jump on it. Cover some ground. This is Borbone now. Thirty-eight strikes, sixteen balls. Fister, great ratio. Two down. In just twelve days, we're going to be rolling out the biggest fan appreciation night in Safeco Field history. Friday, October the first. That's when the Mariners are going to be facing the A's. We're going to say thanks for your season-long tremendous support. Fantastic prizes going to be given away throughout the game, including round trip airfare for two, autographed jerseys, a thousand dollars worth of Arco gas, and more. For tickets, you can visit Fan Appreciation Night. You can visit Mariners.com. Elvis Andrus looks at his strike. It's just a Fister's shining moment this year. It was his sixth inning no hitter uh, that he had. He went six innings as a no hitter in pitching no hit ball on April the 19th against Baltimore before Nick Markakis spoiled his uh, bid with a leadoff single in the seventh. There's a shot of Felix. He had one through seven innings the other night. Just barely outside. Good 
up the middle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. And Josh can't make the throw, so that'll be an infield hit for Elvis Anders. Two weeks from today, it will all be over. The Mariners heading off tomorrow for Toronto. Two night games a day game. Tampa Bay, two night games a day game. And Texas, two night games in a day game before returning home for the Final Four against the Oakland Athletics. Sixty-two pitches for Doug. Forty-four of them for strikes. And the Rangers keep beating the ball on the ground. He has good movement on his fastball. Nice two-seam fastball going today, along with that slow curveball. Curveball he's throwing up there about seventy-one miles an hour. And that's lined into right field for a base hit. So Andres will scoot on into third base. Just like in the third inning with two outs. Rangers have runners at first and third. And David Murphy, who's two for two this afternoon, is the hitter. First and second, two outs in the first inning. So he's had some minutes scoring position today. He's been able to get out of it so far. He had a 13 game hitting streak snapped the other day. Outside. Moves to the, the batter. 2 and 0. Oh. At the knees. Three and one. Oakland leading Minnesota six to two in Minnesota. They're trying to hang on. The magic number six for Texas to eliminate the A's. Three one. Five ball center field and should get out of it again. Saunders makes the easy catch. Two hits, two left. So we're going to the bottom half of the fifth. Got a nice pitcher's duel between Doug Fister and Tommy Hunter. There is no score.
All right, Angie, thank you very much, and welcome back to Safe Gold Field. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Hi again, everybody. Rick Reyes along with Mike Blowers and Blow. Great pitching duel between Mr. Hunter and Mr. Fister. Uh, they're both pitching well. I like the way that Doug, although Hunter's had an easier time of it, Doug's been in trouble a couple of different times in this game. Yeah. He's needed to make a big pitch with two outs, and he's been able to do that so far. It's a nice defense behind him, too. Nice catch by Saunders out in yeah. right center field. Mariners just have to get the bats going, give him a little bit of run support. Ryan Langerhans leading things off here in the bottom of the fifth inning, trying to do that. Fouls went away, and the count goes to one and two. On Ryan, his time is called. Matt Trainer, the catcher, out to the mound to have a talk with Tommy Hunter. Mariners only the one run last night, and that came on the Franklin Gutierrez home run. And Three that was runs it. in the series so far for the Mariners, and, and they come into this game one and one. So nice pitching effort by Felix in the first night. And I just, you know, just offensively, just haven't been able to get anything going against the Rangers pitching so far. And that's. Something you have to talk about now when you talk about the Texas Rangers. It's always been about the offense, but now their pitching has been very, very solid, especially with this kid right here. He's only 23, Mike, and he's 12 and 3. Missed a lot of the first half of the season on the DL with the strained oblique. Followed back by Langerhand, still 2 and 2. 57 pitches for him so far. He's been efficient in this game. You and I were talking. On radio about you know the chances for the Texas Rangers and you got to like their chances because they've got Cliff Lee at the top of that rotation. C.J. Wilson has done a very very good job. He battled Felix two nights ago and he has 14 wins on the year. You got Neftali Feliz closing out games now. He's just a kid but very very effective and as everybody knows these guys can score runs and they have to get that guy on the far end there. Josh Hamilton healthy and back in their lineup. So. You know, they played well all year. I, I think that offensively, they're more than just trying to hit home runs to beat you. They can they can do some things against yeah. a quality pitcher with some of their speed that they have now uh, to manufacture some runs if they have to. We were talking about that as well before the game. Fly ball left field down the line on the run. David Murphy starting to run out of room, and this one is into the seats down the line, and it's still two and two on Langerhands. You take a look at their. Team stats, they're fifth in stolen bases. They're third in on base percentage. Number one, and this is the one that we were talking about, they're number one in sacrifice bunts. Which you would never think that, especially huh. playing in the ballpark that they play in. But Ron Washington, he, I, I, I think it's great that he knows his club, he knows his club is going to hit their share of home runs, but he won't sit around and wait for him anymore. Right. And, I, and, I, and again, I think when you get into the postseason, runs are tough to come by, and that's going to be. Something that'll be an advantage to them because of the way they've played things out this year. That keeps the guys at the top of the order and the bottom part of the order with a chance to contribute. Then there's a lot of thump there in the middle of the middle of the order, four or five guys there. And they, they have speed in their lineup too. You've got Andrews at the top of it today. You have Barbone hitting ninth. Both of those guys can fly. Langerhans continues this battle with Tommy Hunter. Right now, this is a nine pitch at bat, number 10 coming up to Ryan Langerhans battling Tommy Hunter. And hit a line drive off the glove of Andrews, the shortstop, his first time up for a base hit. Going inside, ball three, full count three and two. You gotta love at bats like this, Mike. When the hitter's up there, and you've done this many times, you know, you grind and grind and grind, and then, and then the cherry on top is the the base hit. Well, in today's age, Rick, if, if you can get a 10 pitch at bat, 11 pitch at bat, you look at it with most pitchers going 100, even though you may make it out, you make him work. That's a tenth of his ball game that you took right. up with just one at bat. That's a big chunk. That's a big chunk of it. So, you, you know, even in the end, if he, if he ends up getting the hitter out, it's cost him a lot right. to get through that one batter. And then how many times you see the pitcher make a mistake to the next guy after a long at bat? And it's inside, and Langerhands walks on the 12th pitch. Holy smokes, what an at bat right there by Ryan Langerhands. So he has himself a leadoff free pass. And the Mariners have to go ahead and run out at first base. Let's take a look at our Quest High Speed pitch brought to you by Quest High Speed Internet. Tommy Hunter's fastball at 94, Doug Fister's fast, uh, fastball at 91. 
But Doug has that good changeup and the real good slow breaking ball working too. And Darren has the opportunity to do a lot of different things. Langerhans can steal a base. Josh handles the bat. He can hit and run or he might even bunt. He takes off. It's a hit and run. Hopper to short. Andrews has it. Second safe over to first and they get Wilson at first. But with Langerhans taking off, head first line into second, he's safe. It was a rocket on a hop over to Andrews, the shortstop, but the little toss to Kinsler was just a little late. Langerhans, good hustle, is safe at second, but they get the out at Wilson at first one away. Time now for a Coors Light freeze cam, Mike. I love it. Put him in motion. Langerhans diving into second wow. base. Again, he has better speed than I think a lot of people think. We've seen him steal some bases late in games, but because he's on the move, he's able to beat it. Josh thrown out by a long ways at first because he hit the ball hard, but I put it in motion. Get him moving. Great hustle by Langerhans. Great work by our camera crew. Good job, guys, to get that shot here. Center fielder Michael Saunders. A curveball for a strike. Oh, and one. So that ball had to travel a little ways to get Wilson over at first base. As the Rangers tried to turn two, but they could not get Langerhans. Swing and a miss out in front of the change, and it's 0 and 2 on Saunders. So, yeah, Mike, when when you're having a game like this where the, both pitchers are pitching so very well, both managers are thinking, okay, I got to make something happen. Put the game in motion if I can, try to manufacture a run with the right guys. A little pop up left side of the end. Falling for the shortstop, Andrews is there to make the catch. Saunders is out number two. And the key to all of that is having the right guys there. You have Langerhans leading the inning off with a walk. You know that he can run. Josh can certainly handle the bat. So you have, and you can do a bunch of different things. You know, you can have Langerhans just straight steal it if you wanted to, or bunt him right. over because you're in the fifth inning and the way Fisker is pitching. So I, you know, that's not an option that I would take at this point in the game, but I love the fact that you have Langerhans move. So they stayed out of the double play, and here is catcher Guillermo Quiroz just up from. Triple A Tacoma, where he helped the Rainiers to the Pacific Coast League title. Sweep it aside the Memphis Redbirds in Memphis because of the renovation down at Cheney Stadium in Tacoma. In the air, down the right field side, foul going back to first baseman Moreland, and he can't get to it. Back into the seats, and a fan reaches up, makes the catch, brought his glove out to the ballpark. Nice catch, and it's on one of Kiro's. One on two outs. So for Tacoma, their first PCL title since 1969. Way to go, guys. And now they play the Columbus Clippers, winners of the International League, for the one game winner take all Triple A title on Tuesday night in Oklahoma City. One and one on Kiros. I'll tell you what, Mike, these guys have been putting on a lot of miles to Tacoma Rainiers postseason. Triple A season lasting this long until Tuesday. 21st of September. Tricky hop handled at third by Michael Young. Toss across and it's in time to get Kiros for the final out of the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. One man left on after five innings of play. Mariners, Rangers, no score.
No scores. We go to the top half of the sixth inning. Say, friends, visit the official online shop of the Seattle Mariners at Mariners.com. Browse the largest selection of authentic team gear, including official caps, T-shirts, jerseys, collectibles, and more. Get your team gear straight from the source. Shop the Mariners.com shop. Happy Sunday afternoon, everybody. It's turned out to be a nice day. We still have plenty of sunshine. The roof wide open for the final game of the series for the Rangers. Here's designated hitter Vladimir Guerrero. Inside pitch from Fister. Ball won the count. Left side of the infield, Mike, is way back there. Good idea. Uh huh. Fouled away out by the Ranger dugout. One and one on Vladimir. Shortstop Josh Wilson is a step onto the outfield grass and left. I would play where Langer hands. Stand if I was you, the shortstop. You would feel pretty safe there. I'd be kind of safe there. Not totally. Inside ball two, two and one. I know you played a lot of third base. There's a look at the pitch count for Pister 71 pitches. Ball gets to you in a hurry. Like that. But foul, watch it. And the count is even on Guerrero. Two balls and two strikes. Was it Sammy Sosa that hit one at you in a cold? Yeah, no, he probably didn't run around third, and I was playing in. Yeah. Good, that's good. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't good at all. I know. You told me the story. It had to be painful. 2-2. Two -two. Line drive, rocket left field. Langerhans going back on the track and off the wall on a hop. Guerrero to second. The throw by Langerhans. Figgy down with a tag. Out at second. Vladimir Guerrero. What a throw by Ryan Langerhans. Light shot over his head. He took it off the wall and a hop, and he fires it in in a hurry to Sean Figgins. One away. And this is a line drive because Langerhans, we showed him he was playing deep, just can't get back quickly enough, but makes a nice play off the wall and an accurate throw at second. I don't blame Guerrero for trying. You have to make the outfielder make a play. And Langerhans did. That was a nice throw all the way into second base. An easy tag for Biggins. Nelson Cruz with a drive deep to left field. And this one is gone. Goodbye baseball. Nelson Cruz with his 21st home run of the season. Giving the Rangers a 1-0 lead here in the top of the sixth. A Cruz missile out by the Ranger bullpen. It was Cruz who busted up the no-hit bid of Felix Hernandez in the eighth inning of the game on Friday night. And when you consider wow. the amount of time that he has missed this year because he's been on the DL, he's having a nice year. Take a look at this swing. Pitch belt high, middle in. And he just lines it out into the bullpen. That's his 21st home run of the year, 73 RBIs for somebody that's been on the DL a couple of times this year. Three times. So here is Ian Kinsler with a soft looper to shallow left field going out. Wilson can't get to it over his head. A base hit for Kinsler. One on, one away, one run in. Let's check in with Angie Mentink. Angie. What a race, Ange, going on in the American League East between the Yankees and the Rays. So they've been flip-flopping that top spot over the last few days. Yeah, no change today. Both those clubs losing. That one's going to go down to the wire. Mm -hmm. And these Rangers will be playing the winners of the American League East, one of those two clubs. Mitch Moreland fouls a pitch away. Let's see if Doug can get a ground ball. He's given up three straight hits. Was helped out on the first hit. A ball is hit off the fence by the nice play by Langerhans, but then there was a home run and now a base hit by Kinsler. And Nelson Cruz can really square the pitch, can he, Mike? Wow. Uh, and with everything else with that hit, he's hitting around 318 on the year. Mm -hmm. It's not just hitting home runs, he's done a nice job. Moreland takes ball two, two balls and a strike. 78 pitches for Doug Fister. Had to work in the last thing, throwing 21 in the fifth. 
That's a pitch coming right at you. The 2 1 pitch to Moreland. Well, not yet. Moreland wants some time. Swing and a miss. Get slider in on his hands, Mike, and the count goes to two and two. Mr. Working with Guillermo Quiroz this afternoon, who was at Double A West Tennessee and Triple A Tacoma this year, called up a few days ago, getting the start for Adam Moore. And Josh Bart. Lined into right field, a base hit for Moreland. Kinsler, the turn, heads for third. Up of the ball is Ichiro. The throw to third will be cut off by Josh Wilson. So Mitch Moreland with a base hit, and the Rangers are keeping the pressure on Doug Fister. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners. Time called. Pitching coach Carl Willis out to the mound to settle down Doug Fister. Well, the thing that you need to be concerned about is the big inning, Rick, and so far, the Rangers now that's four straight hits. They have one run on the board, so Doug can still get out of here with some damage control if he can get the double play S trainer coming up to catcher. And go back to getting another ground ball, get the ball down again. He can work his way out of an inning that's been stressful for him. He's trying to locate that two seam fastball away, try to get a ground ball from trainer. Trainer is 0 for 2. So far, the line for Doug, five and a third innings, no walks. Couple of strikeouts, and the Rangers have Kinsler on at third, Moreland at first. Shadow's trying to creep out right behind home plate right now. Here's the pitch, a strike on Trainer, 0 and 1. Fifty percent for Trainer, trying to get that runner in from third base. And inside ball one one and one. That's the name of the game Mike you know with. Less than two outs get that runner in from third base. And Doug right now is thinking don't get that runner in. Right. get a ground ball to the shortstop. Ground ball down the line backhanded by Lopez has time coming to the plate and out at home is Kinsler. Kinsler going on contact out at the plate and Lopez had to go to his right to backhand plant. And throws a strike to Guillermo Quiroz for the out at the plate on Kinsler two away. And you see the backhand going over he gets in line with the runner but he throws it back inside. So Quiroz has an easy catch. And it's just a matter of getting back and putting the tag on Murphy. So two outs and now the Rangers have runners. At first and second. They lead one and nothing in here, center fielder Julio Bourbon. Inside, ball one. Fister able to get out of jams in the first, the third, and the fifth. Trying to do so again here in the sixth inning. Ground ball right to smoke at first base. Tricky hop handles it. Little underhand pitch over to Fister at the bag, and it's in time to get the ball. That'll end the inning. Texas one run. Could have been worse. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Rangers now lead one to nothing.
All right, Angie, we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. one nothing Texas, and Mom and Dad have the kids here at the ballpark having a great time. Kids enjoying some sugar. Absolutely. Some ice cream, cotton candy, or both. I mean, just come on out and have a good time. A lot of good stuff. Each row to lead things off. He's 0 for 2 on the day. Tommy Hunter's been mighty tough. Down and away. Ball one. One ball and one strike. Mitro has bounced out to Young at third. Flight out to Cruz in right field. He can turn in a pitch and tie it. That pitch down and away. Off speed. Ball two. Two and one. Hunter from Indianapolis, Indiana. Dave Sims on his football assignment in Indianapolis. He's got the game today between the Colts and the New York Giants, the Manning brothers. Go ahead, one another. Ground ball to second baseman Ian Kinsler. One out for the Mariners here in the bottom of the sixth inning. They will be back Tuesday when we get to uh, Toronto to take on the Blue Jays. Opening game of the final road trip of the year, Mike. Season winding down. Mariners will take a look at Jose Bautista. What a year. 49 home runs on the season. What do you have? 16 last year, something like that? Yeah, 18 maybe. Here's Sean Figgins. Tries the bunt, takes it for a strike, though, 0 and 1. Mariners' final homestand of the year will come up on September the 30th, four game series to close it out here at Safeco Field against the Oakland A's. Pass the mound, out behind second, hits the bag and bounds away from Andrews and into right center field. A base hit by Sean Figgins off the second base bag. Looked like Andrews was going to be able to get there and make a play, but the ball hits right off the edge of the bag. See it hit the corner. He definitely would have been in good shape to make a play. Yeah. Young man has a strong arm. Even with big and speed, I think he would have been able to get him so the Mariners catch a break. Yeah, the little signal by Sean Fagan. Show me the signs one more time. Roll them over one more time. First baseman got him away. So one on, one away. Tie and run at first base. One nothing Rangers. And here is designated hitter Franklin Gutierrez. 0 for 2 on the day. Well, with the first, he get Fagan's back. So Ron Washington. Think that maybe Figgins will be on the move. Oh, I think he'll be on the move. It's just a matter if they guess right. Which pitch is he going to run on? Let's go, good day. Oh, one, not the first pitch. Good year is the home run in last night's game. The only run for the Mariners. Came off but Cliff Lee was outstanding. Eight innings, three hits, one run, walked only one. That's always the story when Cliff Lee walks a bat. Only his 16th walk this year, and he's had two intentional walks. Swing and a miss. Try to hold up. Good off speed pitch. One and one looking for a fastball. Didn't get it. There was the location right on the outside corner. Goody wearing Alvin Davis is old number number 21 AD was here with his mom a few days ago when the Mariners opened up the series against the Boston Red Sox the homestand Get to see AD here at the ballpark the 1984 American League rookie of the year with the Mariners. Member of the Mariners Hall of Fame. One on, one away. Swing and a miss. Another off speed pitch. Mike in the count one and two, and Hunter's had a good one. Franklin's still looking for the fastball. You get up there as a hitter and you see a breaking ball and a breaking ball and a breaking ball. You start thinking eventually he has to throw the fastball, doesn't he? Where is it? It's fastball about 91 to 94 this afternoon. Oh, 
fouled away. Still wanted to. Pitch was outside, not taking any chances, fought it off. Figgins on at first base. Shadows out of the backside of home plate from the upper deck. And that misses ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Pitch is up a little bit, right above the strike zone. Hunter tough against the Mariners this year in two starts, 2 0 record, and a 1.46 ERA. And right now he's gone five and a third scoreless innings this afternoon. Well hit down the left field line on the run, Murphy. This one is going to be on the track, bounces off the wall. Figgins coming around third, heading home. The throw in cut off. Reeling to the plate, Figgins slides. He's safe at home. The ball in and out of the glove, the catcher trainer. Hey, there was no call. He missed home plate and then went back to the plate and he scored. How about that? The first base umpire, Jim Wolf, came down the line. The umpires rotated. Hickox, the plate umpire, went to third and there was no call by Wolf because there was no call to make. And Figgins realized it and he went back to the plate and he scores and the game is tied 1 1. How about that? I'm not sure that he went back because he didn't see a call or because of the reaction by Hunter. You see the ball goes by. He slides wide of it. And then you see you see him scramble right away and he runs back. He looked like he was headed back to the dugout thinking maybe he had a piece of it. Take a look at the home plate umpire. No call. No call. And then you see Hunter go after the ball right away. And Biggins, I think because of the quick movement by Hunter to pick up the ball, he ran back and touched home plate. Heads up play by Figgins. Wow, what a play. And the game is tied at 1-1. Gutierrez is on at second with an RBI double. Jose Lopez is swinging a miss 0-1. What a heads up play. Here's a look at it one more time, Mike. Nice job by Trainer to block the plate. He tries to reach back and touch the back side of it and never gets it. His left hand hit off his left leg, the left leg of Trainer. Ground ball to short. Andrews is there. And his throw to first is going to be in time to get Lopez for the second out of the inning. And that'll bring up Justin Smoke. Well, what a play. And if you're Jim Wolf, the first base umpire who came down the line to watch that play at home, I mean, he can't do anything because there isn't a call to make. Right. It's really a nice rotation by the umpires. Third base umpire had to go out and watch the play. So the home plate umpire, Ed Hickox, he goes over to third, and that's when Wolf comes into home. These guys are moving with the play. Here's Justin Spoke at check swing. Did he foul tip it? A left hander. Rapata is up for pitching. We saw him up in last night's game. It was a foul tip by Justin Smokes. The count is 0 1. Big, big run out there at second base with the way these two guys have pitched. Hunter for the Rangers and Fister for the Mariners. Goody on at second. Andrews trying to keep him close, breaks in behind him. Smoke a ground ball to the second baseman Ian Kinsler. He's got it, and that will retire the side. But a heck of an interesting play in the bottom of the sixth inning. Figgins scoring on the extra base hit by Gutierrez to tie it up. He slid on by the catcher. There was no call until Figgins went back and stepped on home plate. We've got a tie game after six. Mariners won, and the Rangers won.
Biggin scoring the tying run in the bottom half of the sixth inning on what a play at home plate. Originally, as Figgins slid in, he missed the plate because Trainer did a great job to block the plate and then had to get back, step on the plate, and eventually the call was made safe. Here's the pitch on the way to Elvis Andrews leading off the top half of the seventh inning, a 1 1 tie. Let's go back to the studio. Dave Valley, former catcher, heck of a job by Trainer to block the plate, and Figgins sets a play to get back to score. Fortunately, the ball got on by the catcher trainer after Figgins slid in. Line foul on the left field side by Andrews, and the count is even at two balls and two strikes. And then we was alerted by the guys in the dugout or a hunter, the pitcher, who was trying to back up on the play, Val. Bounces out to shortstop Josh Wilson. So one out for the Rangers here in the top half of the seventh inning. Game even at one to one. And guys, once again, uh, Franklin Gutierrez coming through with a clutch base hit. Yeah, they needed to tie the game up. I think the other thing that's impressive, Val, is you look at this game, Kiros getting his first start, getting a chance to work with Fister. I would imagine because it doesn't look like Doug has had to shake him off at all. They spent a lot of time with each other the last day or two, knowing that Kiros was going to get this start because they seem to be in a pretty good groove. Here is Michael Young, and he takes a pitch for a strike from Fisker on one as the roof begins to close, begins to extend. We got some cloudy skies, dark skies off to our left. So the roof in the process of closing. Up and in on Young for ball one, one ball and one strike. And Val is a catcher when you work with a guy for the first time. Do you keep it pretty basic? What do you want to throw? What do you want to do? Young bounces out. Shortstop Josh Wilson, Mike, with a nice play because when he got to that ball, he had to wait for a fraction of a second to get that throw over the head of Sean Figgins. Take a look at it. They're playing over in the hole. They pitch him inside. It actually jams him, but Young, so many times, will try to inside out the ball. And you're right, he had to wait for Figgins to clear a little bit of a double clutch, but Josh with the strong arms able to throw him out. So two outs for the Rangers. I'll leave it at one. Here's David Murphy, and Murphy takes a strike. 0 oh and 1. Murphy was a mighty big final out for Doug Fister in the fifth inning when the Rangers left two on. Murphy on in front of that off speed pitch, fouls it away. The count is 0 and 2. And blow Doug Fister, 11 outs on the ground and six in the air with a couple of strikeouts. It's one of the things we talked about in the pregame show, Rick, is for him to be successful against this Ranger club, he has to be down in the zone, and he has done that. So the roof continues to close. Looking off to our left, we see some nasty clouds. Fly ball lifted into shallow left field. Going out, Wilson coming in. Langer hands. Ryan is there. In the sunshine, we have left over on this Sunday afternoon to make the catch for out number three. Seventh inning stretch time. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Mariners and the Rangers tied 1-1.
ever think we'd have something like this? No, absolutely not. And that's amazing. Same to see the roof close, and when it is extended, it's still an open air ballpark. Seventh inning stretch time, fans on their feet. Mariners and the Rangers all tied at 1 1 as the roof continues to close. The Mariners will send up Ryan Langerhans, Josh Wilson, and Michael Saunders. What a duel today between Doug Fister and Tommy Hunter. The roof about two thirds of the way closed as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning because there's something going on off to our left. Some dark skies above Elliott Bay. So here's Langerhans who had that long at bat, a 12 pitch at bat, and then walked in the bottom of the fifth inning. He singled, hit a rocket past shortstop Elvis Andrews back in the second. Oh, and one, excuse me, ball one, one ball and no strikes. 88 pitches for Tommy Hunter. 62 for strikes. Fouled away off by the camera. Well, heads up, guys. Count is one and one on Ryan. Langer hands has played a role, Mike, in this game defensively. Throughout Guerrero hit that line drive over his head in left field and then threw a strike into Sean Figgins to get Guerrero trying to stretch that into a double. And he's been on base a couple of times, just hasn't been able to get around to score. I've got that sliver of sunlight right at the plate in the eyes of Langerhans as the roof is closing. Now it starts to shade up. Line drive foul into the seats down the right field line. Man, make that catch. Yes, he did. Well, he hung in there with it. I think it actually hit him in the leg and he was able to pin it up <laughs> against his leg with his glove. A nice play. Oh, football, that's a catch, and I got a new rule now in football where now sometimes it's not a catch. Group just about closed. Down low. All three full count. Tommy Hunter just 23 years of age. Well hit down the right field line. This one is going to be a fair ball in toward the corner. Langerhans can run. He's at second. Makes the turn. Trying for third. Cruz a throw in. Cut off. Kinsler's relay not in time. Ryan Langerhans with a leadoff triple here in the bottom of the seventh inning. And the Mariners have the go ahead run 90 feet away at third base. Another situation, Rick, where Hunter he's pitched everybody away, and because of that, Cruz was playing out in right center field. This ball is not hit hard. It's just a fly ball down the right field line, but a long ways to go for Nelson Cruz. Was not able to get there. And we talked about it earlier in the game. Langerhans runs better than I think a lot of people give him credit for. He sees it down there. Cruz picking it up about that time, and he'd already made up his mind he was getting into third. And first line in the nice third. A nice day for Langerhans so far. Two for two with a walk. Outstanding in that big throw at second. Josh Wilson infield up close. A swing and a ground ball along the first baseline. Foul. Picked up by Tommy Hunter. That ball had some English on it, Mike, and wanted to come back into fair territory. Yeah, and I think Mitch Moreland, I think he wanted Hunter yeah. to let it go. Because Langerhans at third was staying there. And the comeback there had been an easy out. The ball wanted to come back. And Moreland didn't have a chance to get to it. Hunter got to it in foul territory. And the count is 0 1 on Josh Wilson. So the Rangers infield up close. That was the first triple of the year for Ryan Langerhans. Young and Andrews close on the left side. And there is Langerhans on at third. Josh Wilson trying to get Langerhans in with the go ahead run. Fouled away on the third base side and it just ricochets way back into the crowd. 0 oh 2 on Wilson. Josh was out 1 6 3 as the Rangers tried to turn a double play, but Langerhans was off to the races with 
safe at second base. But they were able to get Josh at first base. Pops it up behind home plate, and this will be out of play. No chance for the catch of Matt Trainer. And the count is still 0 2 on Wilson. Ninety six pitches for Hunter. And pop of the left hander side armor is getting loose again in the Texas Rangers bullpen. And Saunders the lefty on deck. Way outside good stop by trainer Matt trainer the catcher ball one. One and two. Dustin Nippert, the right hander, alongside the lefty Rapata. Ground ball is a chance to get on through with everybody up close. And that pitch is in the dirt for ball two. Two balls and two strikes. What were you thinking as a hitter in this situation, Mike? Well, I, I think with the infield in. Try to, I mean, Hunter right now, he's trying to get you to hit the ball on the ground. I think you have to look away. I think you have to let the ball get a little bit deeper and think more up the middle. You have the center fielder, Borbon. He's jading you in the right center field. You know, that's early in the count. Now with two strikes, he ended up 0-2 right away. So he just has to battle at this point. There you go. Line drive, base in left field. That's going to score Langerhands with the go-ahead run. Wilson the turn. He'll stop it first. With an RBI single, and the Mariners have the lead two to one over the Rangers. Nice piece of hitting by Josh Wilson. So the Mariners lead for the first time in this ball game out of the dugout. Manager Ron Washington. And that is going to be it for the starter this afternoon. Tommy Hunter, he's going to go down to the bullpen. Mariners have the lead two to one. Don't go away. We're going to be back after this timeout. His day is done after going seven innings. Fine start today. Josh Wilson, RBI single left field, scoring Ryan Langerhans, giving the Mariners that two to one lead. And Mike, that's it for Tommy Hunter, who goes pitch well. pitches. Yeah, he pitched well. The Mariners finally able to get to him. Ryan Langerhans, the leadoff triple here in the seventh inning. Nice job by Josh Wilson to pick him up. We'll take a look at Clay Rapata. Recently called up, only four innings pitched for him. Three strikeouts, two walks. Michael Saunders first to face Clay Rapata. Wilson on it first, nobody out. Close to third base, Michael Young looking for his sacrifice, and back to the bag goes Wilson. Saunders 0 for 2 has popped up to Young at third. He's popped up to the shortstop, Elvis Andrews. On attempt popped up right back to the pitcher. Rapata makes the easy catch halfway between the mound and home plate. One out. 
And one on for catcher Guillermo Quiroz. Right hander Brandon League. Warming up down on the bullpen. He'll take over in the top of the eighth inning. And they'll leave Rapata out there, even though Kyrus is coming up the right handed hitter. You have Ichiro on deck. So Ron Washington going to stay with his left hander. So Kiro's the right handed bat, will face the southpaw. Kiro's one for two with a single to left field. He's also grounded out to Young at third base. Over to first, getting Wilson back to the bat. Big day for Ryan Langerhans with two hits and a run scored and a walk and a fine play defensively to throw out Guerrero at second, trying to stretch a single into a double outside on Kiro's ball one. So that guy who plays sporadically throughout the year doesn't get a chance to play that much, having a heck of a ball game. Kid out of San Antonio, Texas. His father was Norm Charlton's high school baseball coach. Over to first base to get Wilson back to the bag. So I guess Ryan's dad had something to do with the sheriff's maturation process as a high school player. Snap throw to first base by Rapata. Back to the bag goes Wilson. Heroes look down at Lee Tinsley coaching at third. Wilson's lead at first. Swing and a foul off the catcher trainer. One and one. Heroes was up with the Mariners for a little while last year playing just four ball games. Way outside and off the glove of trainer, but he gets to it very quickly to keep Wilson at first base. Ball two, two and one. Two and one, good count. Put a hit and run on Rick. And the Mariners put the game in motion earlier. Brian Langerhans was able to take off. Josh Wilson hit the ball hard to shortstop. They couldn't turn the double play because of it. Fly ball into right field. Back it up his Cruz near the warning track, and he's there to make the catch. Two outs in the inning. Say Sunday, October the third is going to be Kids Appreciation Day right here at Safeco Field. All kids 14 and under will take home a moose poster thanks to Ivers and Kid Valley. Plus, youngsters and their families will be treated to a pregame parade on the field. Prizes including autographed baseballs, a portable DVD player, a karaoke machine, Mike. That uh, I think fits your needs. A Nintendo Wii and more will be given away for tickets. Visit Mariners.com. Here is Ichiro. Ball one. Here's a look at our Amika hit zone. Up and away a 400 average for each hit the Mariners score from now through the end of the season. Amika Insurance. Here's a swing and a fly ball into right center field over Nelson Cruz there in plenty of time and almost runs into Bourbon the center fielder but Cruz makes the catch and that will end the inning. The Mariners get a run to take the lead and we go to the top half of the eighth. It's the Mariners two Rangers one and here comes Brandon Lee.
As we go to the top half of the eighth inning, and Brandon League will take over, and Doug Fister, a fine afternoon, Mike. They really pitched well. Scattered nine hits, the one run, a solo home run by Nelson Cruz, 96 pitches for him, 66 of them for strikes. And this call to the bullpen brought to you by your Northwest Dodge dealers. Brandon Lee on in the eighth inning. Vladimir Guerrero. Line drive right center field, and this one is going to get down for a base hit. And we'll have a pinch runner for him. Lead off single. And yes, we will. The numbers for Brandon Lee. Second like will be Herman that'll run for Guerrero. So put Esteban Herman on at first base, pinch running for Vladimir. Tie and run aboard right away for the Rangers here in the eighth inning. Brings up Nelson Cruz. Very impressive outing for Doug Fister when you can hold this ball club to just one run over. Seven innings, Mike. He did not walk a bat. Big key in the game. A lot of ground ball outs for him. You know, some big pitches. They put pressure on him throughout the time that he was in there for the seven innings, but he made big pitches when he needed to. Big swing and a miss by Cruz, and it's on one. Four times the Rangers stranded two runners. Doug Fister leaves with a two to one lead. Inside one and one. <laughs> Ryan takes off. Pretty good jump. Throw it down to second by Kiros, and he is out at second. We had to wait. Second base umpire Gary Cedarstrom had to wait to see if Figgins hung on to it. What a throw by Guillermo Quiroz right on the money. And Herman is thrown out at second. Looks like Herman gets a good jump over at first base. Take a look at it. Takes off. Nice footwork by Quiroz. Quick. Figgins gets the tag down. He does hang on to it. Nice throw. Right on the bag, and that's got down there in the hurry. Popped up behind home plate and out of play. Here it is that throw right to Sean Figgins. Down with the tag, came straight down on the tag on Herman for the out, one away. Nice tag by Sean Figgins. And the 2 2 crew swing and a miss, and Lee strikes him out second out of the inning. Say, hey friends, ride and save on Sound Transit Sounder Train. For more information on schedules and routes, visit soundtransit.org. Fans, I'm sure, taking the train to the ballpark this afternoon. Final game of the series, and this homestand, the Mariners taking off on their final road trip of the year tomorrow to Toronto, Tampa Bay, and to Texas. And take on the Oakland A's here on September the 30th, final homestand of the year, a four game series with the A's. Ian Kinsler turns away from ball one. Nice defense, Mike, by the Mariners throughout the afternoon. One and one. <laughs> Dustin Nipper. Looks like he will pitch the bottom of the eighth for the Rangers. On the inside corner, strike two, one and two on Kinsler. Had a base hit his last time up in the sixth inning. He's one for three. Side two and two. Had a chance to meet the new owner of the Texas Rangers this morning in the uh, Rangers clubhouse, Mr. Chuck Greenberg. 
He and Nolan Ryan and their group uh, able to purchase the Rangers a few weeks back in the uh, the auction. When the Rangers were up for sale. Up and in on Kinsler ball three full count three and two really excited to join Major League Baseball as one of the new owners and he said could come at a better time for the way the Rangers have played this year on their way to the playoffs for the first time since 1999 and that pitch is high ball four is so Kinsler draws a two out walk here in the top half of the eighth inning. Brings a first baseman Mitch Moreland. Story of the ball game that guy Doug Fister. So here's Moreland who is one for three. He singled his last time up in the sixth inning. Side corner, 0 and 1. Chris Davis on deck for the Rangers. Uh, Brandon Lee has two outs here in the top half of the eighth inning. Runner goes. Fouled away on the first base side by Moreland in the count. Nothing in two. And the Mariners fortunate at that time. Kinsler had a great jump. He took off before Lee even started towards home. Even though Kira's made a nice throw down to get her mind, I don't think he would have had a chance with Kinsler in the jump that he just had over at first base. Kinsler back to first after the foul off the bat of Moreland. Kinsler at first. There he goes. Swing and another bounce foul up the first base side by Moreland. Still on to the count. And Kinsler once again has to turn around and head on back to first base. Let's see if Lee makes a move to first base. Kinsler running on the last two pitches. Nope. But a swing and a miss by Moreland for strike three, and that'll retire the side. A couple of strikeouts for Brandon League. That's it for the Rangers. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Barron is leading Texas two to one. With a big RBI double and an RBI single by Josh Wilson. Mariners have that two to one lead. Also, a big day for Ryan Langerhans with a triple he scored, but turned out to be that go ahead run. 
Time now for our U.S. Marine Corps leaders of the game, Sean Figgins and Ichiro with 40 plus steals. Teammates with 40 plus steals since 1994, only done a couple of times last year. Carl Crawford and B.J. Upton had 40 plus steals each with the Tampa Bay Rays. And Sean Figgins will lead off the bottom of the eighth inning against a new pitcher, right-hander Dustin Nipper takes over, Mike. Numbers for Nipper. 4.59 ERA, 42 strikeouts and 49 innings pitched. Figgins with a single scored the tying run in the bottom of the sixth inning on an interesting play. Strike called 0 and 1 with one on and one away in the bottom of the sixth inning down 1 nothing. Figgins scampered home as Gutierrez hit a shot to left field for the extra base hit. Figgins slid home as the throw came to the plate. But Figgins reaching in with his left hand, couldn't get his hand on the plate. It hit off the left shin guard of the catcher, Matt Trainer. Slid across the back. There was no call by the umpire, who, by the way, was the first base umpire, who came down the line to convert home plate for a play. And then Figgins realized there was no call, got to the plate, scored as the ball got on by the catcher, Matt Trainer. David Artsman getting loose down to the bullpen. And the Mariners tied the game at 1 1. Now they have the two to one lead. David Arts, am I getting loose in the Mariners' pen? Out of play in the third base side. Dustin Nippard with a new baseball from home plate up our Ed Hickox. When we go to the top half of the ninth inning, we've got a new catcher for the Rangers. Or do we? Trainer's still in there. Davis was going to pitch hit. So it's going to be Trainer, Bobon, and Andrews. Ball into right field, backing up Nelson Cruz, and he makes the catch one away here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Well, FS sends Seahawks all access returns tomorrow night with the exclusive game day sights and sounds from Seattle's Week Two matchup with Kyle Orton and the Denver Broncos. That's tomorrow at 10:30 on FSN and FSN HD. FSN's Seahawks all access. Rick Riz along with Mike Blowers, our AD up in the booth. As always, Robbie Nielsen, best in the business. And here's Franklin Gutierrez, big double to score Figgins back in the sixth. One for three. Slow breaking ball for a strike, 0 and 1. New York losing in Baltimore this afternoon, 4 to 3. Rays losing at home to the Angels, 6 3. He's still with a half game lead, and that pitch hits Gutierrez in the back. Dustin Nippert hits Goody. Couldn't tell to hit him in the back or in the hip. Either way, a 95 mile an hour fastball is not going to feel good. Take a no. look at it. The hip. Yeah. Ouch. Off his hip, off his jersey, front part of his jersey. One on, one away. 2 1 Mariners, bottom of the eighth, and here's Jose Lopez. Rangers at 83 and 64, 10 game lead over the Oakland A's in the West. Played great at home, 48 and 26. That pitch in there, a strike to Lopez, 0 and 1. But Mike on the road, Texas under 500 at 35 and 38. Well, you hope that you can play 500 on the road and, and play well in your home ballpark. They're close enough to it. 
You look at the way the West is stacking up in the wild card. Well, the first base to get Gutierrez back to the bag. He's got a pretty good lead. And I'd be surprised if he tries to steal it. One out. Take a shot at it. 22 steals on the year for Franklin. Inside on Lopez, ball one, one and one. Is Murphy toward the corner? He's there and makes the catch. Gutierrez staying over at first base made a little bit of a break, but Lopez flies out two outs in the inning. So every week, Mariners All Access brings you the latest happenings on the home team with exclusive interviews, player profiles, and the memorable highlights you won't find anywhere else. Catch an all new episode tomorrow at 6 p.m. on FSN and FSN HD. Time call trainer out to the mound and here comes manager Ron Washington to the mound as well activity down to the bullpen and that's going to be it for Nippert the right hander and lefty Darren Oliver will take over in relief Baron is leading by a score of two to one don't go away we'll be back after this timeout. Hitting first baseman will turn around a bat from the right side, Mike. Aaron Oliver, the veteran, been around a long time. Rick, take a look at his numbers: two and a half ERA, 57 and two thirds, 63 strikeouts, and 14 walks. One on two outs, and here's the ex-Ranger Justin Smoke. Went over in that deal for Cliff Lee back on July the 9th over to first base with a toss to get Gutierrez back to the bag. Justin just recalled from Triple A Tacoma was one for four last night. It's outside, ball one. Ground ball, base hit in the left field. He jumped on a breaking ball from Darren Oliver. And down to second base goes Franklin Gutierrez. So the Mariners looking for a little insurance run here in the bottom of the eighth inning. They lead it two to one. They've got Gutierrez at second, Smoke on at first with two outs. Jumps on a breaking ball. 
Michael Young playing close to the line does not want to see a double so he finds the hole over on the left side. And here is Ryan Langerhans having a very good day. And a chance uh, to start on in left field singled in the second walked in the fifth after a long 12 pitch at bat and then tripled and scored the go ahead run in the seventh. Two on two outs. All oh, one on Ryan. Gutierrez at second, smoke on at first base. One and one the count. Ryan has some snap in that bat. He's got three home runs on the year with limited, very limited playing time down in the bullpen. David Artsma getting ready to work the top half of the ninth. Big curve is outside, ball two, two and one. Strike on the outside corner, two and two. With CJ Wilson coming out of the bullpen to become a starter this year. That was an effective lefty out of the pen from last season. So the Rangers went out and got Darren Oliver. Gutierrez at second, smoke at first base. Turn around and look by Oliver as Goody gets back to the back. Mariners two runs this afternoon on seven hits. The Rangers one run. They about hit the Mariners. They have ten hits. Five ball into right field. Nelson Cruz is right there, and he makes the catch, and that will retire the side. The Mariners leave two stranded. As we go to the top of the ninth inning, last try for the Rangers. Close one. Mariners two, and the Rangers one. Vernon Wells and the Blue Jays catch the game matchup live from Rogers Center this Tuesday at 3 30 on FSN and FSN HD in the opening pitching matchups. Luke French going for the Marys, Mark Zepsinski going for the Blue Jays. That's on Tuesday night from Rogers Center north of the border in Toronto. That's a business to take care of this afternoon here at Safeco Field. David Ardsman takes over, Mike. Numbers for Arzma, three and a half ERA, 48 and two thirds, 49 strikeouts. Opponents average is 201. 
Chris Davis will lead things off. He'll bat for Matt Trainer. So this is Davis. Outside ball one. David Arts went a couple of nights ago picking up that 30th save and that two to one win over the Rangers. Felix Hernandez had the spectacular outing. Eight innings, gave up one run, had a no hitter for seven innings. Ball two, two and on Davis. Davis for Bone, back to the top of the order. Andrews, and that's outside. Ball three, three and nothing. Doug Fister, the starter, went seven innings, gave up only the one run. Brandon Lee, a scoreless eighth. Strike three and one on Davis. And Lee got some help from his catcher, Guillermo Quiroz, who threw out pinch runner Esteban Herman trying to steal second base after Guerrero led off the eighth inning with a base hit. Fastball cut on and missed, full count three and two. Here's my fastball, see if we can hit it, got it on by. I didn't have much choice but to challenge him in a 3 1 count fastball. Belt high in the middle of the plate. Throws it by Davis. Let's see if he turns it up a notch. 3 2. Up and away. Fastball misses. Ball four. So Chris Davis with a leadoff walk here in the top of the ninth inning. And the Rangers have the tie and run aboard. And you have Borbone coming up to the plate. Creates a lot of problems defensively. He can bond, he'll hit and run. He can do a lot of different things here. So in close at third base, looking for the sacrifice bunt is Jose Lopez. Bone shows bunt and he takes a strike on one, and Lopez really. Moving along the third baseline. And he was right on top of him. They're going 0 for 3 on the afternoon. Mariners lead it 2 to 1. Shows Bunt takes a strike on the outside corner. The count is nothing in 2. About him leading the league in sacrifices, a couple of strikes that he didn't even make an attempt at. And that pitch is in the dirt, knocking it down as Kiro's the catcher for ball one. One and two the count. One on, nobody out for the Rangers. Texas a run on ten hits. Mariners two runs on seven. Ground ball right side over is Sean Figgins. Looks at second, goes for the sure out at first base, and it's in time to get Barbone. So Barbone advances Davis without the sacrifice. Slow roller to the right side of the infield. And now the Rangers have the tying run in scoring position. So although he wasn't able to sacrifice by taking a couple of fastballs, still finds a way to get the job done. Ball was not hit hard. No chance to get Davis at second. Mm -hmm. The Mariners can hang on. That guy right there is going to get the win. Doug Fister who won seven innings. Scattered nine hits. Gave up only one run. Elvis Andrews up there. One for four with a single back of the fifth inning. Takes a look at a strike from Arjma. 0-1. Seen some outstanding pitching in this series. Felix Hernandez two nights ago, Cliff Lee last night, Doug Fister this afternoon. Out of play down the right field side, and it's 0 and 2 on Andrews. Felix had that no hitter for seven innings on Friday night until Nelson Cruz let off the top of the eighth inning with that line drive home run. The left center field. Today's story, Doug Fister.
The 0 2. All one, one ball, two strikes. Mariners have been able to keep Andrews in check in this series. One for 12 in this series. Was hitting 382 with runners in scoring position this year. Brown ball to Hopper right to Figgins at second base, and that is out number two and on the play. Davis will get to third, but two down here in the top half of the ninth inning. Brings up Michael Young. Tough, tough out. Tough out because he'll hit the ball the other way. Always hits for a high average. He has some pop too. David Artsville wants it. Gets a new baseball from the home plate umpire Ed Hickox. David Artsville looking for his 31st save of the year and trying to get a win for Doug Fister, which would be his sixth. But here's Young, who has two hits this afternoon. He is two for four. Tying run now on at third base. And that pitch is up and away. Ball one. Chris Davis perched on at third. Right now, it looks like the right side of the infield's playing him straight up. Josh cheating towards the hole a little bit. A lot of room up the middle. Oh, Michael, get it right, baby. This guy will hit the ball hard the other way. That's where he got, well, his last two hits for the right field. The one nothing pitch fouled away behind home plate and out of play and the count evens up on Young at one and one. That pitch down the middle. Rangers take it off for Anaheim after the ball game. They got three against the Angels and four against the A's. David Arsbud trying to wrap it up here in the top of the ninth inning. Up high to Young. Ball two, two and one. Skipper Ron Washington has done a very good job with this walk. The walk to his left. New hitting coach Clint Hurdle replacing Rudy Howard Neal. Out of play in the first base side, and the count evens up on Young at two and two. And this game boils down to one more strike. That was Archibald's best fastball so far, 96 miles an hour. 20,764 this afternoon here at Safe Gold Field. They're on their feet. Looking for David Archibald to put a ball on this one. And the 2 2 on the way to Young, and it's outside full count. On deck is David Murphy, but Artsville wants to end it right here. Nine run at third. And that pitch up and away for ball four. So Michael Young draws a walk. And now the Rangers have the tying run on a third, and the go ahead run is on at first base with two down for David Murphy. And it's interesting. You have Murphy coming up there, left handed hitter. Ardsma has done a nice job lately mixing in his split, but you have Kiros, the new catcher behind the plate with a runner at third. You bounce that split up there. You have to have a lot of confidence in the guy behind the dish that he's going to keep it in front of him. So let's see what Kiros likes to do right here to try to get Murphy out for the final out of the game. He has two hits today, two for four. And that pitch is in there for a strike, 0 and 1. He had to get that first one in there. He did. Murphy singled back in the first, singled again in the third. And has flied out twice. Hardsma ready. Long hesitation. Now the 0 1 pitch is a strike two called on the outside corner. Nothing in two on Murphy. A couple of good pitches from Arthur. They both look like they're just off the plate away. He gets the call on both of them. Hey, look at our tracer. He's getting that pitch. Go there again. Yeah, why not? And the 0 2. 
Bouncy ball foul along the first baseline taken by Smoke. Yeah, that was either the breaking ball or the split from Ardsma. 88 miles an hour on the inside corner. Go back away because he's been getting that strike. Well, you can even expand it a little bit. You're ahead 0-2. Yeah. You know, just get it off the plate away. See if he'll chase one of them. There's a tie run at third, Davis. Michael Young on a first base to go ahead run. Mariners hanging on to that 2 1 lead here in the top of the ninth inning. Two on, two outs. And again, the 0 2 to Murphy, and he went away and he missed outside. Ball one with a 96 mile an hour fastball, one and two. Good pitch, Rick. There's nothing that Murphy can do with that pitch. He might steal another call from the umpire. If he swings at it, even if he hits it, he's not going to hit it hard. David ready. The one two. Ground ball to short. Wilson has it. Sets up. Throws the first. And the ball game is over. Murphy out at first base. And the Mariners win it two to one this afternoon over the Texas Rangers. And they win the series two games to one. Doug Fister getting the win. Artsma saved number 31. And a big play at home plate as Figgins scored to tie the game on a double by Gutierrez. And Fister's the story for me in this game. He had to pitch well. We know that the Rangers can do a lot of damage, and damage control is something that he did today. He gave up nine hits in this game. The one run they score, a solo home run by Cruz, but a really nice job by Fister in the bullpen to hold down this Rangers offense. The Rangers in four innings left two runners stranded, so Doug Fister coming through when it really counted, and so did the bullpen, Brandon League. And David Artsma, Mariners over the Rangers, a final score of 2-1. to one. And now for the Mariners, it's on the road to Toronto, Tampa Bay, and to Texas. Let's send it out to left center field and Brad Adam. Brad? All right, Rizzi, thank you very much. Yes, after I...